This is KGW News at Noon. Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Drew Carney and we start today with news from the Oregon Health Authority, which announced less than an hour ago that Oregon is doing away with its statewide outdoor mask mandate. But I want to start today with another policy announcement. OHA is lifting the requirement for outdoor mask wearing in crowded settings. That's OHA Director Patrick Allen there. That rule, the outdoor mask mandate, started back in August during a COVID surge. But now with cases going down, the Oregon Health Authority says the progress we've made in Oregon demonstrates that we don't need that outdoor mask mandate anymore. There was a, sto a sobering statistic that came out yesterday as far as Oregon's deaths toll in COVID is concerned. So far, more than 5,000 people in Oregon have died from COVID. The good news here is that deaths are trending down as are infections and hospitalizations. The state is currently averaging about 900 new cases a day. And now that Pfizer and Moderna's COVID booster shots are approved for anyone 18 and older who's been fully vaccinated, we have heard from a lot of viewers saying it's actually hard to find a booster shot appointment. So KGW's Christine Pitawanas looked at availability and access to appointments. People have told us they've tried to make an appointment to get their COVID-19 booster shot, and the stories have varied. Some people say they've been able to walk right into a pharmacy, get their booster right alongside their flu shot without an appointment, while others say it's nearly impossible to schedule an appointment. So we decided to see for ourselves. First, we went to the OHSU website and saw two available appointments on the 1st and 2nd of December. Minutes later, though, after going back to check, they were gone. Now on to the Walgreens website. We filled out the questionnaire and looked for locations in the Portland area to get a booster, but there were no available appointments. In the Salem area, the soonest available appointments were on Monday, December 6th, with some time slots. On the CVS website, there was no availability in the Portland area until December 6th at a few of the stores that popped up. But in the Salem area, much more availability starting December 1st. Just look at all these time slots. So availability seems somewhat dependent on situation and location, and that's something Oregon state health officials anticipated. Over the weekend, they announced the authorization of boosters for all Oregonians 18 and up. I want to ask for your patience. While there are plenty of COVID-19 vaccine doses available to accommodate requests for booster vaccines, a booster appointment may not be immediately available, but it will be. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Now, there are several places offering walk-in vaccines where you don't actually need an appointment. Those include a full-time clinic in Beaverton at Tektronix and LeCare Pharmacy in Northeast Portland. Again, just to name a few. You can search for a location near you on the state's Vaccine Finder website. That's getvaccinated.oregon.gov. It's a nice monument, but we'd rather have Ian. Today marks one year since Ian Phillips was found dead after he was shot in Northeast Portland. Police still haven't named any suspects in his case, but KGW's Alma McCarty spoke to Ian's grandmother about the ongoing search for answers. In Portland, on Northeast 122nd in the Hazelwood neighborhood, stands this tree. I call it the only witness to the murder. So far, it won't talk to me or give up any information, but um, we put pictures up of Ian on the tree and light candles and plant flowers. Different photos show Ian Phillips at different stages in his life before his murder one year ago. Adventurous, inquisitive, fun soul. His grandmother, Judy Grace, points out her favorites. This is Ian as a boy. He's about six years old. That is a self-portrait of Ian that he drew when he was four years old. I never realized he was an artist. <laughs> it's a nice monument, but would rather have Ian. On November 23, 2020, after 1 a.m., Portland police found Phillips shot to death in his car in this parking lot. A uh, punch in the gut when uh, the detective called me uh, to tell me that Ian was dead. Despite a year's time, a Crime Stoppers alert and reward released in February, PPB reports there is no new information. Ian Phillips' homicide remains unsolved. The fact that after a year, 
they don't have any suspects. The possibility of it ever being solved is um, really almost nil. As another holiday without Ian approaches, this family prays for a breakthrough in the case. The pain of his absence, undeniable and enduring. I really miss him. He was, um, there's so many things that I would have liked to share with him. Again, that was Ian's grandmother talking to Alma McCarty for that report. And again, police haven't named any suspects in this case. So if you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers of Oregon. Crime Stoppers is offering up to a $2,500 reward for information that leads to an arrest and tips can be submitted anonymously. Meanwhile, a Max operator is sharing his story after he helped stop a man from attacking riders last weekend. Brittany Falkers explains how he used a flashlight and a cell phone charging cord to get that suspect under control. Nobody ever expects to have to deal with any sort of an emergent situation when they come to work. But, but that's exactly where Chris Parker found himself Friday night. He was driving a Max train on the Green Line when he pulled up to the Clackamas Town Center stop. And I opened the door to step out onto the platform and I had noticed that the gentleman was in an altercation uh, with two other passengers. Chris saw the man swinging what turned out to be a pair of scissors at the other passengers. He was making contact and so I thought it was going to be pretty bad. At first, he tried to keep other people away from the man. Then the suspect pinned one of the victims to the ground, still with the knife in his hand. We're here to make people feel safe. And so we, you know, we don't have weapons, you know, that we at our disposal. The only thing I had was my flashlight. Chris says he hit the man's hand with a flashlight, knocking the scissors away. That's when he realized he had another tool at his disposal. A 10 foot phone cord that's braided. Uh, and so I ended up grabbing that from my bag and tied his feet together so I could keep him kind of like under control and I sat on his feet. Chris says the two victims also played a key role in holding the man down until police got there. Thankfully, they walked away with just minor injuries. You just got to let people know that you're there for them. Brittany Folkers, KGW News. Remarkable story, right? And sheriff's deputies did arrest that man. They believe his actions may have been racially motivated, so he's now facing assault and bias crime charges. Our next story is about the woman you see behind me. This is Ashlyn Maddox, and Maddox died during this past summer's record heat. Her family says they still don't know exactly how it happened. Ashlyn would have celebrated her birthday last week, so to mark that occasion, her mom, Cheryl Hollins, flew in from Las Vegas to visit her daughter's gravesite at Rose City Cemetery. Maddox died in June on a hot sidewalk in southeast Portland. Neighbors found her 50 feet from the adult care home where she lived. The high that day in Portland was a record 116 degrees. Maddox dealt with epilepsy and had multiple strokes. She had just gone to the doctor and the medical transport service that drove her home let her out at the curb. But Maddox never went inside. Instead, she walked the wrong way as the driver took off. A rep for the car service, Ride to Care, says that driver followed protocol. Ashlyn's mom, though, says someone should have made sure that her daughter got inside. And I don't know how they ain't reliable. They reliable for the death of my child. Because if he would have dropped her off at home where she lived at and said, I'm going to leave it alone. I got to let my lawyer. I can't run my mouth. I'm going to leave that alone. Let my lawyers take care of that. Ashlyn's mom has hired an attorney. The Oregon Health Authority, meanwhile, also investigating Ride to Care's role in Ashlyn's death. You can read more about this investigation at KGW.com. All right, one more story before we check in with Rod. And this one may seem like the uh, plot of a movie, like Armageddon perhaps, because NASA is planning to send a spaceship into space and they want that spaceship to run into an asteroid. That's right, they're planning this collision. So this evening, NASA says they'll launch what they're calling DART, D-A-R-T, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. The mission is to test our interplanetary defense systems. The spacecraft will crash into a moonlit orbiting around a larger asteroid. It'll be moving at a speed of more than 14,000 miles an hour. When the crash actually happens, it won't blow up the moonlet. It'll redirect it. NASA is doing this to see how asteroids would respond to deflection attempts, should we ever actually need one. You have plenty of time between launch and impact. NASA predicts DART. The whole process here won't actually take place until around September of 2022. So they send it into space today 
and the actual collision rod will take place next September. Redefining the phrase ramming speed, right, Drew? <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right, Rod. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> Are you redefining our uh, Thanksgiving forecast? Uh, Thanksgiving Day still has potential to be mild and certainly more dry than wet, and we'll get to that. Here's a look at the big picture uh, right now. We still have some snow showers out east along 84, especially in Baker County, and then up over the Blues. Um, here we have scattered rain showers on the west side continuing. I do want to show you what has fallen since early this morning up over the Cascades. So, so 30 degrees, this is Highway 26 at Government Camp. They report six inches of snow at pass level. Santiam Pass, ODOT has just recently made this look a lot better than it was not that long ago. So realize wintry conditions over the Cascades. Here down low, though, while we're still seeing some showers and, in fact, some heavy rain pockets, there's Newburgh, St. Paul, can be getting some decent rain right now. There are also some increasing sun breaks. Caught a uh, rainbow right there from the live camera in Hood River. This is Cathedral Ridge Winery. So that was about 30 minutes ago, I noticed that. Downtown Portland, we're getting some sun breaks mixed with mostly cloudy skies. We're at 50, decreasing showers, increasing sun breaks for your afternoon hours. I have a 63 degree day on my seven day. Jeez. That's a change.